Hello, welcome to the Spring Wheel 5. It is so good to have you join us today. Again, this is just a ministry of our church, and we try to take just a few moments and try to encourage you, to strengthen you, and challenge you to be what God has called you to be. So I hope that you're having a wonderful day, and we want to just think about Philippians, the book of Philippians chapter 2. Uh, there are some verses here that help, help us to understand the value, the importance, and how we can experience joy through unity. And we know that God desires that his people be unified, that his people join together uh, to serve him, to serve others, to love him, and to love others. And we know God wants to use us to make a difference in this world. Uh, we know that there's so much hate, so much bitterness, and so much division in the world around us. So God gives us many verses in the scripture to help us, to teach us, to understand how we can be unified with one another. And so here in Philippians chapter 2, it says, If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. It says, let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. So here in this first verse, Philippians 2 verse 1, we know that we have been motivated toward unity. And when we look at this verse, we know that God has given us many tools many ways in which we can be unified. It speaks about consolation in Christ, the comfort of love. And so we know that Jesus has a desire that we love one another, not as the world loves, but as the scripture teaches us, that we can look there in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 to see what true love is. And so God has taught us that we are to be kind and patient, long suffering, uh, all the things there that's described to us as what the character of true biblical scriptural love is. And so we can find comfort in that. Uh, I think just a good example is whenever you look at a family that loves one another. You have a father and a mother and children that are loving one another. You know that there's peace there. And you know that there's strength there. You know that there's help there. And just like in a family, uh, a home, we know that God desires that our church be a family. Uh, that we love one another. That we are there supporting and encouraging each other. We know that there's great strength, great comfort in finding that love, that unity of love. It speaks about the fellowship of the Spirit. But we know that as believers, we have the Holy Spirit indwelling us, that we are temples of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Ghost is the one that gives us the power, the ability to have that unity, to overcome our own flesh, to overcome whatever trial or tribulation that we're facing. The Holy Ghost is there to give us that guidance, to give us that strength, to speak to our hearts, uh, to help us to understand how we can be unified. I'm so grateful that we don't have to live this life alone, uh, that God has given us his word. He's given us himself uh, to help guide us. For we know that many times we don't have the answer. Uh, many times we don't know where to turn or what to do. Uh, but when we look to him and we look in his word, we know that God gives us that ability to find that strength and that comfort uh, in that fellowship. And when it speaks about the bowels and mercies, we know that's affection and great mercy. We know that there's great affection that comes from Christ and even other believers. There's mercy that comes from that loving Father above. And so that we should be motivated toward that unity. Uh, we can join together as brothers and sisters in Christ and find that love, find that strength uh, that we have for one another. And it is valuable. It's so important that we join together. There's a story that's told about a gentleman that was in church and got out of church. And the pastor went to visit him. And the gentleman was sitting there in his recliner and the fire was going. And so the minister just walked in and sat down. He didn't say a word. And he looked over the fire and he grabbed uh, the tools there, there and he picked up a fire hot coal and he brought it out and he set it on the hearth. And they just sit there and watch that fiery hot coal. And it was real bright, real red at the beginning. And the longer it sat there, the more black and the more cold it became. And finally, after all the heat had escaped from that coal, the minister picked it up and set it back in the flames. And it wasn't long, and the thing was on fire again. And that's a great example of us in being unified at God's house and being unified with God's people. As we gather together, uh, we know that we find strength, that we find that fire that we need to serve God. But when we're separated in and of ourselves, 
You know that we cannot be the effective minister that God's called us to be. So I encourage you to be unified with one another, be unified in Christ. Thank you so much for joining us today.